Today we ask a question that has been plaguing Christians since the dawn of time. Okay, probably, probably not really, but it has been a big question in Christianity. Can Christians get tattoos? Well, in Leviticus 19.28 it says, Do not cut your bodies for the dead, or put tattoo marks on yourselves, I am the Lord. That seems pretty straightforward, makes this an extremely short video. Uh, actually, it's, it's not that simple. Let's talk about it. What's up guys, Jeff here. I make videos just like this every single week to help you keep living that bold life for Jesus. All right guys, so if you read my post earlier this week, I had promised that we would be at the new studio. That that doesn't sound right. It, it's not a new studio, it's a new wall. It's that wall right over there that I'm making specifically for filming. And I had full intentions of recording there this morning but I couldn't get it done. I actually, I was up until like 2 a.m. last night finishing the wall, but the paint was not dry. And so if the paint's not dry, I put these lights on it, it's just gonna look awful. So this is the normal set. Um, we'll record it this for probably the last time today. I don't know, I may use this more in the future, just have some variety. But hopefully next week I will be at setting up with a new background, okay? Um, so I apologize if you were expecting to see the new background, not done yet, almost there, almost there. And actually I have like a whole vlog tutorial, vlog tutorial coming on it. Um, so that'll hopefully be coming out Wednesday or Tuesday. I will, gosh, I was up too late last night. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, if you are an existing subscriber, this is your normal set and the new one will be coming next week. If you are a new subscriber, then this is the normal set. The new one will be coming next week. And you should hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. It just, it makes me happy inside. Just rainbows and unicorns sprout, okay? Okay, so the question today, can Christians get tattoos? Now I'm gonna start because I wanna keep some mystery here. I'm a mysterious person. I have tattoos, okay? I, I do have tattoos, but I got all these tattoos before I became a Christian. So just, just, just add a little spice to it. You don't know what side I'm actually on. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll know and we'll at least come to some sort of understanding why I stand behind words, man, words. So why should Christians not get tattoos? Why is this even a concern? Well, number one, it's a concern because of Leviticus 19.28 that I read in the beginning. I'll read it one more time. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. And for the longest time, that was cut and dry, that was clear instructions, don't get tattoos. Now, the problem is, there's a problem, we're not looking at it in full context. So let's go ahead and read, if we're going to read 1928, let's go ahead and read that little passage, at least the little clip that it's in. If you flipped over to Leviticus, we will read the little section it's in. So it says this, Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will turn to prostitution and filled with wickedness. Now obviously some of those are good practices. The other parts though, it clearly has to do with something in a bigger context, right? In it it says, do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. So. Do you always eat well done steak? I hope not because you're really missing out. It says do not cut the hair at the edges of your head and that is a very popular cut right now. Oh gosh, that's why I have a hat on. Do not get an undercut guys, Leviticus, all right? Do not clip your beards, don't, don't cut your beards. Clearly, I'm cutting my beard. Most of us are. You see, when we read this passage of Leviticus, we can just pull out verse 28, boop, and we can just hold on to that because it makes us feel good inside, right? Don't get tattoos. But, but we're not taking it in context, right? We're just grabbing a scripture and throwing it at other people, right? Like confetti. We're confetting scripture at people, okay? And that's the wrong way to look at scripture. If you pull one single scripture out, what you want it to say and use that, you're taking scripture out of context and you're reading it incorrectly. You can make scripture say anything you want if you take it out of context. 
So when we actually read Leviticus in context, we see that it's actually something else going on here. So to fully understand this passage, you have to know the context. So you need to know who God is talking to, why he's talking to them, and maybe where they are geographically, right? So to understand this, we got to know that God in this passage of Leviticus is talking to the Israelites. And it's after they've been freed from Egypt. So at this point, geographically, the Israelites are in between Egypt and Canaan. They're just kind of sitting right here in the middle, which means they're being affected by both cultures. And they came from Egypt. And over here in Egypt, tattooing was extremely popular. Tattooing, the women uh, in particular would get tattoos on their breasts and on their thighs, on their abdomen, that they would get these tattoos and it was thought to be a good luck charm for the birthing process, that it would help them to give birth. They would also get tattoos to mark themselves for the fertility goddess, Bess. And so in this culture that the Israelites had just come from, tattooing was used in a very ritualistic, idolistic process, right? They would, they would get these tattoos so that they would be a good luck charm, that they would no longer rely on the blessings of God, but these tattoos would provide for them good luck during birth, or that they would mark themselves for a goddess or a god, and that would be to honor them and they would take care of them. So this, this idea of tattooing that they had learned over in Egypt was very pagan. It was committing idolatry at every point. Now they're in between Egypt and Canaan, and so over here in Canaan, they had a, another ritual, and they weren't really into ink tattoos. They were into scarring and, and burning and like branding their bodies. And they would do this in ritualistic senses, especially to mourn for their dead. So it would seem that when God says in Leviticus 19.28, do not cut your bodies for the dead, he, he is clearly talking about this ritual that they're doing in Canaan, right? He says, or put tattoo marks on yourself. And again, he's talking about this ritualistic practice that they're doing in Egypt. And what God is essentially saying is, do not conform to the cultures of this world, right? Do not conform to the cultures around you, especially because it was a form of idolatry. That the tattooing in Egypt was idolatry and, and the scarring over here in Canaan was a ritualistic, again, idolatry. So if we, we can't just pull verse 28 out of Leviticus and say, okay, don't get tattoos. Because most of us shave the sides of our head. It's a very popular trend right now. Most of us trim our beards. I mean, it even says over in verse 19 of Leviticus, just a couple verses before, keep my decrees. Do not mate different kinds of animals. Have you ever seen a mule? Do not plant your fields with two kinds of seed. Everyone does that. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. I, I, I cut my tags out, but I'm sure this is not just cotton because it's incredibly soft. These are cultural laws. Now, some would say that under Christ, we are no longer held to the Old Testament laws. And I would say that is true. We do not earn our salvation by keeping Old Testament laws. So in a lot of ways, we are in a new covenant. We are in a new covenant with Jesus. So a lot of these Old Testament laws that were given to the early Israelites to, to help them steer clear of the temptations of the culture around them, they don't necessarily apply to us. So I would say that Leviticus 19.28 is not speaking to us. I would also say that the tattooing mentioned here, because tattoo, the word tattoo didn't come out until the 1700s, is probably not even the same kind of tattooing that we think of today. Um, but in either case, it is clearly for a people at a certain time, in a certain context. Please don't take scripture out of context. Speaking of, all right, Jeff. Leviticus 19.28, throw it out the window. Doesn't matter, doesn't count, right? What about this one? This one will stump you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I've heard that one. I've heard that one countless times. So people often quote 1 Corinthians 6.19 through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Beautiful scripture. Now what I want you to do is grab your nearest Bible. I got one over here. Got it right here. Flip to first, first, first. All right, now flip to first Corinthians chapter six for me. Okay, you there? So do me a favor, uh, find verse 19. 19. Okay, now back up 
one verse. Verse 18. Okay. Mine, I'm reading in NLT because it's the closest Bible to me. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Let's go and read verse 19 just for fun. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who is given, was given to you by God? Read the context. Paul is clearly talking about sexual immorality. The actual, the heading, I don't know if you can see that, says avoiding sexual sin. The heading is talking about sexual immorality. It's not talking about tattoos. You can make scripture say anything you want if you read it out of context, right? If you just pull one verse out, you can make it say anything. So why don't we step back, read the entire passage, read the chapter, maybe actually read the whole book and see what it says to us. So in my opinion, can Christians get tattoos? Yes, I believe you can. I believe it's not sinful to get a tattoo. I do, however, believe that for some people it's not the right decision. I tell my students all the time that it is not sinful to get a tattoo. However, it is sinful to disobey your mother and father. So if your mom and dad don't want you to get a tattoo, well, that's sinful. Don't do it. I think some tattoos are not a good idea, in my opinion. And, and once, like I said, these tattoos are not Christian. I wasn't a Christian when I got them. Um, this one to me is, it is a lion. And I just, I've always been sort of a protector. So the lion is a animal that I think of to represent myself. But now to me, this takes more of the form of my protector, the lion of Judah. Um, but that was not my intention when I got the tattoo. These tattoos are not, not Christian, but from here on out, I mean, I intend to get Christian tattoos because I want tattoos to mark my faith and I see advantages to having tattoos kind of in this culture. Now, again, it's not for everyone and I never say, I would never say that everyone needs a tattoo or that if you don't want a tattoo that you should go get one. I would also not say that you should go out at midnight and spur of the moment get a tattoo. You should really think about it. Someone once told me that if you want to get a tattoo, what you need to do is get it designed and then carry it in your wallet for a year. At the end of the year, if you still like that design, then you can probably get it. But I would just say there are certain topics we don't need tattoos on, especially as Christians. Be smart, right? You can't just have you know knuckle tattoos that say profanity and then try to preach Christ. People aren't, aren't necessarily going to listen. Now, I mean, if you've got a past and you have that, then that's a testimony. But just to go out and get it, we've got to think about our witness too. And in a lot of ways, I find that people with tattoos are easier to talk to almost. But in a lot of ways, I feel like if a tattoo can open up your witness, like, I mean, I fully intend to get at, at least a couple tattoos relating to my faith. And I, I plan on getting one sort of probably right here. And I want it to be a question provoking tattoo. I want when people see it to ask what it means. And I fully intend for it to mean the gospel, just to give me an opportunity to share the gospel with someone. But also as a constant reminder of the gospel, of who I am through the eyes of Christ. That what Christ did for me, who Jesus is to me, why I live this life that I live. But I would say no, that tattooing is not inherently sinful. I would say that your intention may be sinful, but that the process of tattooing itself is not sinful. And if you have any suggestions for that gospel, thought-provoking, question-provoking tattoo I was speaking of, because I don't necessarily have an idea in mind, I just know that's essentially what I want it to say, that I want it to provoke questions and remind me of the gospel. Uh, if you have any ideas for that, I would love for you guys to leave them down in the comments. Um, and if you, if you disagree with me, that's okay, because I don't feel like it's an essential. I don't feel like, I don't feel like we all have to agree on everything. We may agree or disagree that tattoos are sinful, that Christians can or cannot drink alcohol, or any of these other little things, and that's fine. We can disagree. We have that right to disagree, but we still have to stay united as a body of Christ that we have to stay together and that we still have to love each other and support each other. Because as long as we agree that Jesus is Lord, that he is part of the Trinity, right? As long as we can agree on that, then we are in one accord. If you agree with me, cool. If you don't, that's all right. I just wanted to give you my opinion on what I interpret scripture to mean. 
Um, and I pray that it has spoke to you and maybe answered questions. And, and guys, if you're getting a tattoo, please be smart. That's all I got. I'm just going to end with that. Be smart. All right, guys. Love you. Keep living that bold life.